Hi, and welcome back to our tutorial series to get you started on Test Monitor. These videos are designed to show you how to use the main features of Test Monitor and will help you to set up your first test project. In this second video, we're going to start with setting up your test project. We kick off by defining requirements and risks. Requirements allow you to break down the software needs of every project stakeholder. They're a real good starting point for your test case design and allow you to keep your team up to date by reporting which requirements are met and which fail. Risks help you define project hazards you want to make sure don't happen through testing. They're really useful for reporting which risks are mitigated and which ones still pose a threat. Both are available as filters throughout the application, allowing you to scope test cases, results, and issues based on your selection. In the previous video, we created a project and briefly visited the define stage of testing. Now, we are going to deal with requirements and risks in more detail. Let's go! First, click on the Define menu item. You'll be taken to the Requirements overview. When you haven't defined any requirements yet, you will be prompted to create your first requirement. In the top right-hand corner, you'll see the Add Requirement button. As a general rule of thumb, adding items in Test Monitor is usually performed by clicking on the green button in the top right corner. Once clicked, a dialog box appears, allowing you to enter the requirements details. Select a type, for example, functional requirement, specify a name, and optionally, enter a description. You'll notice that some forms in Test Monitor contain a More section. By clicking on More, you'll reveal some extra, optional fields. In this case, you can add some tags to your requirement. Click on Save to add your requirement. Your requirement is now listed in the overview. A confirmation is briefly shown on the top of the screen as well. In many overviews in Test Monitor, you can use filters to search for specific results. Click on the Filter icon on the left and the Filter menu will appear. You can activate a filter by selecting one or more values. In some cases, additional filters can be added through the Filter Settings menu. Another way to search through the results is by using the Search field on the right side. Enter a search query, and Test Monitor will search display requirements related to your query. You can customize the table by clicking on the column icon on the right. This will open the Table Settings menu. You can enable and disable columns to your preference. Lists in Test Monitor are usually paginated. Below the table, there's a page selector, allowing you to click through the different pages. You can change the page limit as well. Finally, you can sort the table by clicking on one of the column labels. Reverse the direction of the sort by clicking the label again. Most items in Test Monitor have a dedicated detail page. In this case, the page shows the details for a single requirement. This page also allows you to edit the requirement's properties. You can open the requirement's details by clicking on its code or on the Chevron button on the right. When you open a requirement, you'll see the requirement's type, name, and its description. There's a panel showing the related test cases. We're going to talk about test cases and linking them to requirements in the next video. The activity timeline reveals a log of every change made to this requirement, along with the user responsible and time of change. Editing a requirement is simple. When you hover over a field that's editable, a pencil icon will appear next to the field's value. Click on the field, update its value, and click the Save icon to update. To delete a requirement, open the three-dot menu in the upper right-hand corner and select Delete. After your confirmation, you'll be taken back to the overview. You can restore a requirement by heading over to the Recycle Bin. In the Requirements overview, click on the three-dot menu in the upper right-hand corner and select Restore Requirements. Click on the Restore icon of the requirement you want to restore. After your confirmation, your requirement will be listed again in the overview. With requirements covered, we can head over to Risks. Risk-based testing is a project feature that can be enabled in the project settings. If you want risk-based testing, make sure to enable it first. Open the Project Selector, click on the cog wheel, select Features, and toggle Risks. Risks are very similar to requirements in terms of use. While requirements can be categorized by type, risks are grouped by classifications. This is reflected by different fields and filters. Because of the similarity with requirements, we skip the process of adding and editing risks for now. If you want to learn more about managing risks, head over to our knowledge base and check out the articles about risk management. This concludes the second video in the series. In the next video, we continue setting up your test project by designing a test suite and test cases. Thank you for watching, and happy testing!